Hello, everybody. My name is Barry Johns. Welcome back to another edition of Studio Talk. You know, I get asked this question a lot. Um, it's probably in the top five questions uh, that I get asked quite regularly on my channel. And I've touched on it slightly, but it's been a very long time ago. And I wanted to talk about really my recommendations for gear. Oftentimes, there's one thing I think I need everybody to understand who watches this channel. Um, I'm not the kind of person who's going to do this and go tell you what to buy. What I'll do is discuss what you should consider, the things you should analyze, um, the facts that you should look into, the, uh, the reviews, other users' experiences, all the things when you're trying to evaluate this piece of gear over that piece of gear. Um, because ultimately, every, all of you need to really learn if you have it. Now, most of you watching are already there. You already understand this. But many of you aren't like this. And, you know, I, I, I'll get a comment like, you know, after all that video, why didn't you just tell me what to buy? Well, that's not helping you. That's not helping you at all. And, I, and I'm never going to do that. Now, does that mean that I won't recommend a specific piece of gear or a specific plug-in or a specific virtual instrument or whatever it may be? Yes, I will, but if I'm doing that, it's only because I truly, truly, truly believe in it without question. So today, I'm going to talk about the particular what I'll call clone manufacturers, and that is folks out there that make Neve emula emulations, Trident emulations, uh, some Harrison emulations, some, um, some Universal Audio emulations, uh, and, and so on, API and things like that. And so there are some fantastic companies out there that just about every single piece of gear they make is on the money, on the money and worth every penny they're charging for it. Now, there's a lot out there that, that have some great hits and maybe some not so great hits. If you think about it, for those of you that maybe haven't been doing this that long, and when I say that long, you know, 10 years or longer, you know, Warm Audio was really the first company to really become successful. There were plenty of other companies on a smaller scale making clones of gear uh, in the affordable price range. Now, there's always been companies like BAE, uh, I would argue, make the very best Neve emulations uh, that money can buy, but that's not affordable. I'm talking about affordable gear in your, in your studio that the average everyday human being like you and me can afford to have in their studio, and yet, while at the same time, it truly brings the value that you're looking for in the results that you get with it. So Warm Audio was the first one to come out with that and really start doing it on a large scale. And that's when you saw all these other manufacturers see, hey, wait a minute, we can probably do that too. Uh, and then others started entering into the market, uh, trying their, um, you know, their best to be able to do really to follow on the, on the coattails of what Warm Audio had done on a large scale where they could actually produce large volumes of it. Now, um, Warm Audio is not going to be on my top list today. Uh, I have nothing against Warm Audio. I've got Warm Audio gear in here. I've got some of it I love. I've got some of it I haven't touched in a very long time. Um, so, so with that said, you know, I think for the price point, they're at that entry level price point for the most part. Some things are a little bit more on the pricey side. But I have found that the quality of workmanship that comes out of their plant, which I believe is made overseas, is inconsistent at best. When you turn a knob, it doesn't feel like a solid knob. Uh, it just it doesn't feel like it's a solid piece of gear, although they, per they perform well for the cost and for the price that you pay. Um, but I'm going to talk about gear manufacturers that make probably the most common uh, types of gear and emulations or clones out there. And that is on the mic preamp side of things doing, uh, uh, you know, whether it's API or Neve, those are probably the two biggest and most popular that are done the most. There's plenty of others out there, but those are probably the most widely known and widely accepted because of their history. Uh, and then when it gets into EQ, you know, you've got a lot of people are cloning Neve EQs and API EQs there as well. Those are really popular, but there's there's many other EQs out there uh, that are cloned as well. But uh, a couple manufacturers really focus on that. 
And then lastly, it's in compression. And probably the two most cloned compressors on the planet are the original Yuri 1176, which now operates under the banner of Universal Audio. And then you've got the Tektronix uh, LA-2A, which also falls under uni uh, Universal Audio. And there's a long storied history. Those two compressors are probably the most used compressors throughout history. And, and that's for a good reason. They're absolutely amazing. But then, you know, when you typically a lot of people will expect if I get a clone, then I must be making some sacrifices. And in some things, you are. You are. I mean, there's a reason why like a BAE Neve clone costs a whole lot more than, let's say, like a Heritage Audio uh, or, uh, or even a Warm Audio or whether it's, you know, uh, Audioscape or Stam Audio and, and the like, you know, there's a reason for that. But how big are those differences? Um, I would argue not enough to justify the cost. And let's face it, for the most people out there, the more expensive, really perfectly modeled or as close to it as you could get clone devices out there are out, outside of the reach financially for most people at home. I think for most people at home, it's a stretch even to get into hardware at all. And there's certainly a, a large percentage of people out there with home recording studios that probably shouldn't even consider it. Uh, and just because you can do fine and great and amazing work with plugins, there's no doubt about it. But for some of us, we appreciate, even though they are, the differences are not huge between a, an out, outboard hardware versus a plug-in for the most part. That's pretty generic. Some are really a big difference. Some are just subtle differences. But some of us appreciate that and enjoy that, right? So one of the things when you're looking at buying any hardware is you want to make sure you're able to get your return on investment. In other words, that money that you're spending for it, in other words, later on, if you decide to sell it and go to something else, you can get the majority of what you paid for it back out of it when you sell it on Reverb or locally or wherever it is in the world you, or what service you use to sell that. Uh, ultimately, you want to be able to try to buy something that's going to retain and hold its value. You look at something like a distressor example. I mean, just an off the charts, if there's one compressor that you can own and only one for the rest of your life, I would argue that the distressor is probably the one you should get. It doesn't do everything perfectly, but it does enough to put that magical mojo on your recordings wherever you want to use it. But that said, there are different flavors out there. So try to get try to buy something in that next step up where you can get a return on investment. So where are some companies out there that I believe strongly in that one make absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful clones of the hardware that they're attempting to? to get as close to as humanly possible while keeping that price point uh, in, within, the, within the reaches of you know, the average home studio user. Uh, certainly, if by the time you've gotten to the point you're doing hardware, you're probably at that stage in life where you could probably afford a little bit more. Two, what is that build quality? That build quality has to be absolutely solid as a rock. And then three, most importantly, how well do they do it and how great do they sound, okay? Those are super important, and you really got to nail all three of those to be considered, for the most part, by this guy. Does that mean that everything I've bought and everything in here, you know, does all those check marks? No, but there's a reason why some things sit unused and other things get used all the time. I'll give you an example. Over, back over there in the rack, there's a Warm Audio HA73, right? I never use it. I never, ever, ever use it. I have the Heritage Audio version of basically the same thing that's a few hundred dollars more, and it's night and day difference. I would argue that Heritage Audio is worth $400 more than the Warm Audio. That's a piece of gear that I never use. Uh, it's just sitting there taking up rack space. I would only use it if I had to use it. And it doesn't mean that it's terrible, but I simply have better options. I have quite a few Neve uh preamps or Neve cloned preamps here in my studio. And I'm typically not in a situation where I'm tracking a lot of things at one time. Typically, really honestly, two is about the most I'm ever really doing at any one given time here. Now, I have a remote rig that I'll take elsewhere. Uh, if I'm going to go somewhere and track some drums or something like that, a friend of mine has a studio at his house uh, that's really a great space and a great room that's set up for drums. And I'll go over there and record the drums 
and then bring them back in here and then do everything else here. So, so anyway, you got to really nail all three of those things. So you're, you're like, Barry, okay, can you freaking get to the point and tell me who you think are the great ones out there? I'm going to talk about three, and they're not in any particular order. I think they all do a phenomenal job and are worthy, worthy, worthy of your consideration for the money in your pocket. Now, there are other clone manufacturers out there that make specific pieces of gear. And if I were talking about one particular thing, this list might get changed up. I'm talking about a group that makes a variety of gear choices and gear options that really can fit all of the things that I talked about below. Not only the three check marks, but the variety of different mic preamps, different compressors, different EQs and the like. Okay. First up, it's actually a local, local place here out of central Florida, actually more on the coast of the East Coast and over towards Daytona, and that's Audioscape. You cannot go wrong buying anything, anything, anything from Audioscape. I've got a couple pieces of their gear in the studio and absolutely love them all, or both, I should say. Now, I've got to say with Audioscape, they're a heavily desired uh, gear manufacturer. As a matter of fact, um, you pretty much have to wait until something comes available, and then you've got to go in and kind of fight in the queue to see if you're lucky enough to get one. Pretty much every Wednesday and every Saturday, they post up on Facebook and also, you know, where they're, you know, what gear they're going to have that particular week. I'm sure later on they'll expand and they'll actually be able to keep stock inventory of things. But for the most part, you've pretty much got to hope you can get in there unless you do a pre-order and then wait till it comes up and then of course you'll get you'll be in a queue for that but it's one of those things you can't expect to purchase and have them ship the, you know ship out of their their store the next day for the most part that's as of the recording of this video that may change in the future so you can absolutely absolutely trust audioscape wonderful people wonderful company amazing products okay solid 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 great 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 uh, great units okay Next up, Stam Audio. Stam Audio does fantastic work, okay? There was a time in the past where they had some problems, okay? And it never had anything to do with the quality of what they made, but really they kind of overextended themselves. For so those of you who've been doing this around and maybe got felt like you got burnt by Stam Audio many, many years ago, not burnt because you eventually got it, but it took forever to get some gear that you ordered, and I think they probably just overreached and couldn't keep up with the demand. And, and so, but those days are long, long gone. Do not let that stop you from purchasing or considering Stam Audio. The gear they make is top notch where they also make microphones that are absolutely wonderful, wonderful microphones. So I think Stam Audio has to be uh, one of the gear manufacturers that you that you you it is on the very very top of your list of consideration for this. There are all these gear manufacturers. The, the first this one, I'm sorry, Audioscape and Stam Audio are both kind of priced comparably uh, for the types of gear that they make. Not a lot of differences in there, but they they do some very very cool things. And Stam Audio has actually been taking uh, some you know really kind of taking the traditional like an 1176 and modifying it to also do other things to give you other options, okay? A lot of people want to get all hung up on the fact, now this is what I'm about to say has nothing to do with any of these gear manufacturers I talk about, but they want to get hung up on the idea, well, that doesn't perfectly represent, you know, the 1176 that I used in a world-class studio back in 1976 or blah, blah, blah. Who the freak cares? I don't care if it models it exactly. Actually, I could freaking care less. You know what I care about? Does it sound great? Does it add something to my recording? Is it better than a plugin for me? Is it doing something that I that I that I'm benefiting from, right? I yes, I might be looking for a compressor that's a style of 11 and 76 that reacts in the in the heritage um you know, in the heritage of the 1176 or the history, however you want to look at that, sure, I do. Just like I would want something completely different in an LA two-way, right? They're different compressors and they operate differently and just really designed to do th different things and deal with different sources. But all I care about is, does it sound fantastic? And with Stam Audio and Audioscape, the answer is yes, yes, yes. Now, the third one and the last one I'm going to talk about today is a, a gear manufacturer slash DYI that some of you may or may not have heard of before. 
And if you're looking for API, if you're looking for API uh, clone gear, whether it's compressors, EQs, or mic preamps, Capi, C A P I. That's who you gotta consider. Okay. Sometimes their gear is hard to get. Now, what happens is, is they're typically a D. They started out doing a DIY thing. All right. So you buy all the components. If you're handy with a soldering iron and you've got the patience and you can dedicate the time to assemble these pieces on your own, you can save a lot of money. But they are as good as API as far as I'm concerned. API maybe only have a slight advantage over Cappy. Cappy makes fantastic mic preamps, compressors, and EQs. Absolutely fantastic. Or they put the components together. Now what you'll find is there's quite a few people on Reverb who will buy the components and assemble them and you can buy them pre-assembled off of Reverb. Now, like anybody else, they got hit hard. I think Cappy, Audi, Cappy got hit really hard by the chip shortage a few years ago, um, but it seems like they're rebounding very quickly. So if you can get your hands on it, if you notice finding used pieces of Cappy gear on Reverb, used pieces of Stam Audio and used pieces of Audioscape, just do it. Go search Reverb and see how many you actually find. You're not going to find very many just like you're not going to find very many distressors. You're not going to find any uh, purple audio, uh, M M MC77, I believe it is, or 1176, probably the very best 1176 clone that you can get, and that's in the purple audio one. Um, but you're not going to find that, that there's a reason for that. People don't get rid of great stuff. So what does that tell you? All of these gear manufacturers that I just mentioned, you're going to get most of your money back because there's a demand for the used, and if somebody can save $150, $200 on something, they're going to do it and buy your gear, and then you can upgrade to the next thing. Now, do go do a search for warm audio and see how many pieces show up there. Okay, audio on page 45 now of Reverb? I don't know. You know what I mean? It's nothing, I'm not, it has nothing to do with whether warm audio can produce great results. They can. They can. They can. Um, but that said, it's one of those things where if you buy it, if I had to do it all over again, I would have maybe spent a couple hundred dollars more and went with a Stam Audio or went with an Audioscape, okay? And so these are the things to consider. So these are the th those are three brands of many brands, of many, many brands. There's other, there's obviously without a question, many great gear manufacturers out there that do great things. But, I, th but it's few and far between when you find one that's in that affordable price range that consistently does great things or have great products that are all consistently on the money for value, performance, and most importantly, sound, okay? So if you like the things I talk about on this channel, do me a favor, hit that like, subscribe, notification, but most importantly, that subscribe. Help me grow the channel and leave me some comments down below. Tell me what your experiences have been. Again, you may have some pieces of gear that you absolutely love that maybe didn't fall on my list enjoy them, use them. There's nothing wrong with them. Just enjoy them. But just know there are other options out there for later on down the road. Really is that simple. So again, put some comments down below. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about our experience. Let's talk with each other so we can all learn and grow from each other. But until next time, I hope every one of you have a great day. Bye-bye.